Here we'll use the example of a purchase requisition process. In many companies, the process goes like this. Generally, there are three or more steps starting with a form that looks like this. You'll probably have a similar one that your company uses, either digital or otherwise. After the purchase is requested, the manager will then review the purchase request to see that all information is correct. Then there are questions such as, is this a request in the budget, which will then either be approved immediately or need to be forwarded to get director approval. We will now map this process with all the logics and conditions included in just a few minutes. First, we'll go to the Workflows Builder and choose the folder that you'd like to use. You can customize these based on your needs. I'm using the folder Test B and then we'll create a new form from here in the corner. Here we are creating the first step in the requisition process. You'll want to make sure it's easily recognizable as the process you're working on and which step in the process it is. So you might call it Purchase Requisition Step 1. The category will be a form, and the folder will be the one that you're holding it in. Mine is Test B. In the advanced settings, you'll create a macro workflow. Then in the search bar, you'll choose the folder in which you want to hold all the steps in the process. I called mine Purchase Test B. Also, because this is the starting point, you'll choose Starting Point here. Next, in the short description, you can customize your front end with any text or pretty pictures that you might like. Under Define Questions, we'll add a section title, and this will be Section Item. We'll make the first section a form, which will allow us to have unlimited custom fields. We'll name it, Please fill out the following form. Then we'll add in the label, then we'll add in the label, Item Description, and we'll make it a text field so that someone can fill it out. Then we'll add additional fields. We'll call the next one additional information and we'll make it a text area so that they can fill out more descriptions about it. Then we'll add a quantity and we'll make it a number. We'll add a date of future purchase, which will be a date. Then we'll ask, is this item a substitution? And we'll create a select, which will then allow us to add the options yes or no. Also over here, we can add a tip if we think something might not be understood well and say, please help us to better understand your request. The next section will be Section Vendor. We'll make the next question a single choice question and we'll name it, please select a vendor from the list. We'll have vendor A, vendor B, and add answer vendor C. The next section we'll call Additional Information. We'll make this question a form, and we'll ask them to please upload the pertinent documents. Then we'll write a label, Upload Documents, and we'll make this value type Files, so that they can drag and drop their files into it. Next, under Select Workflow, we'll connect all the dots. It'll ask us to please fill out the following form, and we'll have this one go to please select a vendor from the list. Let's, for example, have vendor A and vendor B have to fill out upload documents. Vendor C, we'll just have that go directly to the end. And then under please upload the pertinent documents, we'll have to make sure that that is connected to the end. And then save. At this point, we've only created the main rules and not all of the logics and conditions, but now we can save it and test it to see how it looks. We'll now go on to step two. Just like in step two of the flowchart, the request will then need to go to the manager to approve. We'll create this step to do the same. It will be created in the same way as step one. It will be named Purchase Requisition Step 2. It'll also be a form 
it'll be in the folder test B. And in the advanced settings, we're going to choose macro workflow again and the same folder, purchase test B. We don't have to fill out a short description this time as it's step two of a process. And we can go straight to defining questions. From here, we'll create another form and we'll call it, please answer the following questions. In this one, we can ask, is the value of the item included in our yearly budget? We'll create a select, which will then have the options of yes or no. And then, do you want to proceed with the order? And we can, again, choose select and yes or no. Then go down to select workflow and make sure that all the dots are connected, just like in the last workflow. And then save it and we can go on to step three. For step three, as seen on this chart, we need director approval. So we will again create another form called purchase requisition step three. We'll also make it a form. The folder will be test B again. And in the advanced settings, again, macro workflow and purchase test B. Again, we can skip the description and go straight to defining questions. So this first one we can create as a single choice and ask, do you want to approve the request? We can create yes and no. And as a second option, we can say an open question, please explain why. And that way they can fill out why they're not approving the request. We'll then go again to select workflow and choose if you want to approve the request, we'll go straight to end. If we don't want to, please explain why and then to end. Then save and we have all three steps created. We can go back now and add logics and conditions. If you go back now to step one and go down to eight, you'll find next workflow steps. Here we can choose Purchase Requisition Step 2 as the next workflow in the list. We'll have the condition as always. We'll choose Current User as the one it's assigned to, or you can customize this to certain departments or roles to further share to the correct people. You will then have the option to create sticky notes or create a communication. For example, you've been assigned a form to fill out that would go to the manager, informing him that he has a communication or a request that he needs to look at. Always make sure to save. Finally, go to Purchase Requisition Step 2 and again go down to 8. Under Next Workflow Steps, we'll choose Purchase Requisition Step 3 as the next workflow and we'll have only if and it'll say is the value of this item included in our yearly budget. We'll choose that one as the question. If that equals no, then it will go to step three to get director approval. Then we'll create a second option. We'll create a next workflow of it going back to step one. This will be an only if condition. Do you want to proceed with the order confirmation from question one? So only if this equals no, then it will go back to step one. Again, you can create a communication if you'd like. And now it's all finished. So from this home page, you can now run your process. You can fill out the purchase requisition. For example, Apple TV is what you're looking for. For additional information, I really want one. Quantity can be one. You can choose a date. And then is this item a substitution? We'll click no. And next. Then we choose a vendor from the list. Let's say vendor B. And it'll ask us to upload the pertinent documents. We'll add a document here. And then click next. It'll give us a final review and submit. Now if we go to Workflows, Progress, we can see all the requests that we need to look at. As we can see here, this one's 56% completed. We can see that it's a purchase requisition. And it was created by Mary Jane for step one. 
So imagine I'm the manager and I go in for step two and I click run. Here it asks me to answer the following questions. Is the value of the item included in our yearly budget? Let's say no, it's not. Do you want to proceed with the order confirmation? Yes. We'll click next and submit. And after that final request, it will be sent to the director who will either approve or reject it. And there, you've created your first workflow.